Our church was not comprised of members or parishioners. We were a very close family. We ate together, we laughed together, we cried together, and we worshiped together. Now most of our church family is gone. Our building is probably beyond repair. And the few of us that are left behind lost tragically yesterday. As senseless as this tragedy was, our sweet bell would not have been able to deal with losing so much family yesterday. Please don't forget Sutherland Springs. It hurts, the pain is there, the hurt is there. And like I said, there's no words for all these families, but they're going through. Why, why did this happen in our small community? But only God has the answers, we don't. Please pray for the people here at the First Baptist Church of Sutherland Springs and their families because they are really hurting. On November 5th, 2017, a horrific mass shooting took place at the First Baptist Church in Sutherland Springs, Texas. Devin Kelly, the shooter, was a former Air Force member. Despite a history of domestic violence, including a conviction for assaulting his wife and breaking his stepson's skull, the United States Air Force failed to report this information to the National Criminal Background Check System. The oversight allowed Kelly to buy the weapons that were used in the massacre. Kelly entered the Sunday morning church service armed with a Ruger AR-556 semi-automatic rifle, dressed in black tactical gear and wearing a ballistic vest and mask, he opened fire on the congregation. The attack lasted approximately 11 minutes. 26 people died, including a pregnant woman whose unborn child was also lost. 22 others were injured. Kelly was later killed in a shootout after a car chase. I, although I was hearing, uh, she came into my room and said that uh, it sounded like gunshots. And I, when I was listening at it, it sounded like tapping at the window and I opened the window and did not see anything. And when I went into my kitchen, it sounded more like gunshots from there. And I said, oh my God, somebody's shooting. I ran to my safe where I keep my gun. I grabbed a, a rifle out of the gun, uh, gun safe. My daughter ran out the door but and actually got in her car and drove to the corner. And when she saw a man in black tactical gear, she came running back in and said, Dad, there's someone at the church in black tactical gear shooting up the church. I didn't have any time because I kept hearing the shots one after another, the very rapid shots, just pop, pop, pop. And I knew every one of those shots represented someone, that it was aimed at someone, that they weren't just random shots more than like. I grabbed a handful of ammunition and started loading my magazine. Uh, I ran outside. I didn't even take time to put my shoes on. And I ran across the street looking for it. And when I, I came into the neighbor's yard, his, his so my Dodge pickup truck was sitting right there. And I noticed an SUV, a gray SUV, sitting across from the church, or in front of the church, across the street from, from my neighbor's house with the driver's side door open in the middle of the street. And I didn't know it at the time, but the engine was running. And I'm trying to survey the situation, not knowing what's going on. And then I saw a man in a black tactical helmet with a sun, with a dark shaded helmet on. And uh, obviously, looked to me like it, it was bulletproof vest and he had a pistol in his hand and we exchanged gunfire. The families of the victims filed lawsuits against the Air Force 
arguing the military's negligence was directly responsible for their loved ones' deaths. The United States Department of Justice reached a $144.5 million settlement with the victims and their families in April of 2023. The case highlights the importance of accurate and complete information in the National Criminal Background Check System. It also underscores the need for rigorous accountability within government agencies when such failures occur. This tragic event reignited the national debate on gun control, with advocates calling for stricter background checks and restrictions on assault-style weapons. The church was demolished in August 2024, a decision that was met with mixed reaction from the community. A particularly contentious issue following the Sutherland Springs tragedy has been the fate of the church building itself, while the congregation rebuilt and moved into a new sanctuary about a year and a half after the shooting, the original church building remained. It became a memorial site, a place of reflection and remembrance of the victims. However, other members of the congregation felt the building was a constant painful reminder of the tragedy. After a church vote in 2021 to demolish the building, a legal battle ensued with some families seeking to preserve the site. Ultimately, a judge ruled in favor of the church and demolition began. The decision has been met with strong emotions, with some viewing it as a desecration of a sacred space, while others believed it was a necessary step in the community's healing process. The Sutherland Springs Church shooting remains a stark reminder of the devastating impact of gun violence. It has prompted discussions about mental health, domestic violence, and the need for improved background checks. The community continues to grapple with the aftermath of the tragedy while seeking to honor the lives lost and prevent future occurrences.